Well, the, the presentation is uh, hopefully fitting in the, in the time is uh, trying to provide uh, information to bring uh, to the one of the applications of the of the global unique maps of vertical total electron content um, that uh, can be working in the corresponding working group to extract vertical TC uh, series so for that uh, there are four parts so I many uh, important part of this you already know uh, this you have seen already previous talks and so the first part is uh, visual introduction to genesis genosphere so sorry for that these are very simple questions what is this it's one question for the students what is this you know very well right obviously is the the vertical total electron content um, mm, the, the movie during one day, one recent day. And uh, this uh, has been obtained, uh, has been estimated using the Global Navigation Satellite System measurements. Um, if you want to check the, the present VTEC real time genes, they can be checked in this link. This is a bit dangerous because maybe now the system is not working. <laughs> Typically it's working, but. I see this. Okay. Anyway, uh, we call we call check in real time if if this was the case. This this is the link for real time movie. Um, okay. Uh, also, it's very well known uh, why there are uh, free electrons within the Earth ionosphere, right? It's due to the different chemical reactions uh, at different heights with different predominant uh, mo neutral molecules also in hydrostatic equilibrium, so related with the mol molecular mass. And the main uh, drivers or the main um, source energy source, mostly from the sun to generate free electrons are especially UV and also X-ray band, as, as it is well known. The distribution of uh, quai during the one day, this uh, uh, quai we find more uh, electron content at low latitudes and instead of high latitudes, this is explained by the incidence of the sun. Um, also the, 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 the rotate, I mean the, the daily cycle, this is very naive, very simple, um, due to the rotation and but uh, the co can be explained the double VTEC TC. This also was commented this morning, um, likely in previous uh, lectures. So uh, this is due to the effect, fountain effect, the uh, EV drift, the uh, magnetic field, uh, magnetic electric field cross uh, magnetic field uh, driving force. Um, so this is currently seen in the global unospheric maps computed from, from from Genesis, Global Navigation Satellite System measurements. So the vertical uh, distribution also is very well known how to explain this. Uh, I mean, this peak a few hundreds of kilometers. This is the, the optimal, the balance between enough neutral target uh, molecules to be ionized by UV or X-ray, especially UV solar radiation and also uh, enough molecules to be, to be ionized. This, this is a vertical, a vertical electron density profile obtained uh, from Genesis data as well, from cosmic, one of the cosmic, um, uh, from one of the cosmic receivers. Um, okay. Also, this is also well known, I guess, by most of you. These are the typical, this is a layout representing the measurement of of, uh, from a receiver, in this case, on an airplane, uh, it's not an es the scale is, is not real, but mm, uh, receiving pseudo range measurements. Uh, this is the very well known trilateration problem, which is uh, the foundation of GNSS, not for genospheric studies, as you know very well, but for positioning mostly. And uh, this is uh, the geometrical, um, uh, I mean, the, the way to explain the, the fundamental of positioning with GPS, the, the, the simple explanation using geometry, 
when you know your solar distance to one satellite, you know you are in a sphere of this radius, and when you have two, you are in the intersection, you have three, you are in the intersection of the three spheres. So simplifying, this is a simplified view. There are many other sources, as you know very well, but this is a simplification about the uh, trilateration concept. Uh, at the end, and there are two kinds of observations in GNSS. The preferred one is the carry phase because it's ambiguous. It is the integrated Doppler effect. So when you start integrating, your first value is a fraction of a cycle. But it's very, very, very precise, much more than the pseudo range, mm -hmm. uh, the time marks. The apparent time of our, the time of arrival of the signal, the travel time, apparent travel time, transmitter receiver of the signal multiplied by the light of, by this, the speed of the light. In this uh, plot, we can compare, we can see the noise. In blue, we have differences of pseudo ranges into frequencies for GPS, P2 minus P1. And in red, the corresponding differences, difference changing the sign due to the dependencies that I will remind in the next slide for the carry phase. So the good news is that the carry phase is absolutely clean versus the, the pseudo range, which is very affected by thermal noise and especially by multipath. But time to time, the, you start again, you have a circular sleep due to any an obstruction, due to scintillation event or, or, or high variability phase event. Uh, okay. So the, the, the one challenge to get preci precise, uh, this is the difference of both pseudo ranges and both the corresponding difference of both um, carry phases in length units and should be equivalent to the uh, ionospheric delay, in this case, in meters of, um, in meters, uh, approximately in tens of TC units, approximately tens of TC tecus. Um, but uh, so, this, uh, this, uh, um, the, the, the challenge is if you want to avoid the noise of the pseudo range, you need to estimate these, these values. You, you need to estimate the ambiguity as it was commented before by Luca to try to, to be as close as possible to the actual slant EC, to, to get a calibrated slant EC as accurate as possible or as, lead, as consistent as possible. So this is the challenge or one challenge, and these are just the questions, a reminder of the questions when, when you got build the uh, geometry-free combinations, the ionospheric combinations, carry phase and pseudo range, taking profit in first order was committed before, typically better than 99.9%, uh, um, and um, with other effects which are smaller, like wind up or some instrumental delays that have have to be taken into account as well. So this is uh, the scenario in very uh, compressed way, let's say. But uh, the real, this, the amazing thing is that we have, as it was commented before, thousands, I, I, I wrote here more than thousand, but thousands of, of permanent receivers working 24 seven, uh, hundreds of them working in real time and and you get the observations from, Ar from the Arctic to Antarctica, from the other opposite side of the Earth, the observations of, of these uh, receivers working, for instance, for the real-time international Genesis service are gathered with a latency of less than two seconds. So in less than two seconds, you have the measurements in your computer. So it's amazing. And so, and more than 100 transmitters with the four constellations. So. Uh, I mean, we have an actual uh, scanner, and this is that we uh, that is supported that we call a Genesis Ionosphere. But one way, this is one way of defining it: um, the effects and computation of the distribution of the free electrons, uh, in particular, using Genesis measurements. Um, okay, so. You can interrupt me, uh, not interrupt me, you can ask me at any time. Eh? Don't, don't. Uh, part two, access to UPC and SAT global atmospheric maps. 
PCI and NF registration. Okay, so we have uh, in, in PTI and NF European project have registered uh, special thanks to, to Ivan to, for the um, crucial help to, to do the registrations to my colleague uh, Victoria and myself. Um, uh, the, uh, we have, uh, th there is the access of uh, global VTEC maps, GIMS, computed every 15 minutes since the end of 96. Uh, so this means uh, one, around one million of global VTEC maps uh, continuously every 15 minutes since, since then. And this means more than, uh, there are more than 5,000 uh, VTEC estimations over every map uh, so more than 5,000 million we take uh, um, estimations computed so far, and it's growing. Um, so the, the idea is, uh, here is just a, a, a very s summary of how to access to the, to the, to the data um, um, uh, through PTNRF um, uh, facility. Uh, before that, just I'm showing the, the global electron content, the total number of electrons. You can integrate the VTEC over the sphere, over on all the directions for, from the gym, and you get a very interesting global uh, electron content. This was proposed by Professor Afraimovic uh, almost 25 years ago. And you can perform spectral analysis, and also you can see how, cor how well correlated are the spectrum of the JEC with the spectrum of the KP, for instance, is something that we have um, shown recently and also in a recent paper. Uh, how, we, how these GIMs are computed before providing the, the link through PTNRF? They are computed, we are computing, remember, the main issue is uh, to estimate the car phase ambiguity. Not only the jam, but the absolute value to be able to, to have a, a well cali a, a calibrated slant TC as accurate as possible. Not, not only precise, but also accurate. Uh, coming from the current phase. So what we do is to, to maybe it's a bit uh, small and cannot be seen properly. Uh, we use a, uh, uh, the way to, we don't use the pseudo range data to estimate this ambiguity, which is a typical approach, the phase code leveling. We use the phase tomographic model leveling. We can call it this way. I mean, uh, we uh, estimate simultaneously, we divide the ionosphere in, uh, in a partition of voxels with not too many layers, two at least, to, to, not, to provide freedom to the model to estimate what is the vertical row distribution of free electrons, avoiding the assumption of, uh, the typical assumption of fi fixed height layer and uh, we estimate simultaneously in a forward Kalman filter, I was commented this morning as well by Ivan, in a forward Kalman filter uh, estimated simultaneously the mean electron density of the illuminated voxels and the carrier phase ambiguity of every transmitter receiver pair without cyclic slip. I mean, uh, because it's checking, we are, the software is checking all the time if there are cyclic slips. No cyclic slips, the ambiguity is constant. So as the arcs are long enough, typically a few hours, so at the end you get a, a quite accurate ambiguity because you are doing a very little number of assumptions. You are avoiding the, the pseudo range data, very noisy and multipath affected. You are avoiding the hypothesis of fixed height layer. And this provide, at the end we get this ambiguity. We subtract this ambiguity to the ionospheric carry phase combination that we have shown before, an example and we get the calibrated Tesla and TC. From this calibrated Tesla and TC, one for, for every pair of observations, we transform to the vertical using the common adopted, uh, the convention of 450 kilometers in IGS, it's a convention. It's not real, but it's a convention. And, and we convert uh, these values in individual VTEC values, which are interpolated. These values are interpolated with Kriegin. So this is also related with, uh, I guess, Ivan's talk this morning. We don't interpolate the VTEC values directly. First, we, we make a first model use, using one interpolation technique, which is called splines. We realize that the errors 
uh, were uh, had a certain decorrelation function, if the errors in, in, close, in points which are closer regarding the, the first interpolation mm -hmm. were very correlated, but if you move far away, we, we got the, the, the decorrelation function. It's called the semivariogram in Kriegin terminology. And the Kriegin works very well for interpolating, much better than splines or other techniques that we tested before. And this is basically the, the way in which these uh, genes, in what these genes are, ge are generated, is summarized in this, in this layout. Yeah. Um, okay, this is that we use at UPC on SAT since the end of 96, and also uh, uh, we, are, we are able to, 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 to use, of course, to combine other kind of data, also Doris data, not only Genesis, Doris measurements, and also measurements from LEOs, um, radio occultations, yeah, and this allows to increase the resolution, for instance, in vertical resolution. Okay, so uh, in order to access to, to these teams, so in these slides, uh, I'm not going to, to spend too much time on that. Uh, it can be, it's, it's summarized how to access from browse data collections, um, you can find GIM, global unospheric maps, and uh, you find um, uh, this description, and you can push the URL. It's uh, located in one of our servers, so you can push directly the, the server, the, the link. It's, growing, it's a growing data set. And you can go to the year, a directory is the year, and another directory is the day of year, that we call DOI in the terminology in GNSS, day of the year. And also with, uh, yes, for redundancy with the year, month, and day, and the extension of 15 minutes. So you can go there, and, and, and the, the information is provided in UNS format, which is also provided uh, the documentation. And um, basic, that's all, basically. Um, I'm not going to enter. We can maybe in the exercise, in the exercises, we can, we can see in some detail the UNS format directly from, from the data. Okay. Um, the third part, uh, okay, these GIMPs, these global geometric maps, okay, can be, we have, the, we, have monit we have the monitoring with GNSS of the vertical total electron content for the overall genosphere, interpolating um, an increasing number of, of measurements uh, within more than 25 years, but what else? Can this gene be useful beyond the, the diet uh, usage of, of the VTEC or the diet monitoring of the unosphere? So uh, a couple of recent applications, we have shown a couple of recent applications. First, uh, to generate uh, 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 maps, in fact, three maps of, of the three components of the VTEC gradient. So you can build, you can build the, the, the latitudinal gradient the longitudinal gradient <coughs> and the temporal component of the gradient for the VTEC, for the gym. <coughs> and this, uh, this is something that is appreciated in particular for civil aviation because they, 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 this is one, uh, one parameter, one magnitude which is important uh, uh, regarding the, the metrics of um, availability, especially integrity, accuracy, and continuity. And the other uh, application is the definition of the genospheric strong scale. Le let's go first to the gradient. The, the, the gradient is very simple. I mean, uh, the also we, we validated versus uh, the DLR, uh, the, the work of the DLR colleagues from raw data, and Norbert and, and Mainul from DLR. Uh, they used uh, raw data, and the challenge was to see if the, uh, if our 15 minutes resol time resolution gym and five degrees, 2.5 degrees resolution in longitude and latitude was enough to capture realistic gradients compared with the, the gradients obtained by the other colleagues from raw data. So the, the computation of the gradient, I, I'm not going to bother you, is quite simple. And, and I'm not going to show you the summary. The, the agreement was, was quite good. And this is an example of, of, of uh, for instance, of application 
for uh, for the for for the for the longitudinal gradient, the two first plots in quiet and stormy conditions uh, around St. Patrick's Day storm, and the bottom ones are the latitudinal component of the gradient in in both scenarios. So this is one application. Another application that, for me, is maybe is, can be still more interesting uh, is to define a map of the atmospheric storm scale index. So not just is the extreme of to have one index, global index like KPE or JEC spectrum, um, but is to, to provide what index for every pixel in the map. So to, to generate this map. So that we uh, did was to implement, to see if the, the gyms were able to support the implementation of the atmospheric uh, storm index um, developed by the by the by the colleagues uh, Nisioka. This is the paper, reference paper, Nisioka et al. A new atmospheric storm scale based on TC and FOF2 statistics, and uh, they use raw data directly or direct measurements. And the challenge was to see if the gyms were able to support it. So uh, how it is, it is defined? We keep, we get the same definition. So um, we, uh, the, the relative uh, variation of TC with medians is computed at every uh, voxel or every, sorry, not voxel, hit, hit point. We have a tech here, have a gym. So it's the observed TC minus the reference TC, which is the median value during the latest 27 days, okay? The latest uh, mean solar rotation. And this relative uh, deviation, let's say, this relative uh, deviation uh, is standardized uh, with a mean and a standard deviation, so it's standardized, uh, subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation, considering a reference period, period of some years at, up to 2014. Uh, for the same uh, season, uh, obviously the same midpoint and the same uh, seasonal conditions and uh, computed this mean and standard deviation for uh, some years. We strictly apply the same approach that the Japanese colleagues applied from raw data to, to, to gyms. And the result, uh, and in this way that you get at the end is a sort of semaphore uh, following the classification with raw data up to mi minus, um, minus plus one is quiet, co are quiet conditions, um, up to three moderate, one to three moderate positive storm, three to five strong positive storm, above five sever severe positive storm, and, and not exactly symmetrical, but as other boundaries for the negative, uh, moderate, strong, and severe and negative st uh, storms. Um, so this is, this is a comparison uh, over Japan from the gyms over Japan uh, of the two uh, of, of this uh, IS scale. And, um, and we, we show that are very, very, very um, uh, correlated or very similar uh, over Japan. And we have for everywhere one IS scale at every midpoint. This is one example for, for one quiet uh, day. This is one quiet day, so the, the colors are uh, around green, uh, slightly blue. So uh, we can say maybe this not, this is slightly mid uh, positive, this one. So are quite quiet, mostly uh, quiet uh, everywhere. So, but this is during uh, genospheric storm. Um, so you can see uh, how uh, a severe uh, positive storms started at high latitudes and go down. And as was commented, this can generate addiction, <laughs> this kind of movies. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, they are, uh, more details can be found in, this, in the papers. And the latest part, if there are no questions so far, um, is that I have in mind for the working group on the gyms. So the working group of the gyms, the, the target is in principle is simple, but as it is practical, sometimes the practical things, the first time, the idea can be simple, but maybe 
is not so straightforward. So I will try to summarize the basic things. Uh, the target of the, of the working uh, group on, on gyms is to, 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 to be able to, to use one Yonsat tool that very you extract, you can introduce the, the, the day, the, the year, the, the starting day, the starting, uh, the, the year of the starting, the starting date, the end date can be several years if you wish, will take a while. And uh, the script, which is, uh, was written in the ancient C shell, uh, calling um, uh, executables, number crunching executables in Fortran, AUK, AWK, uh, scripts, and so on, it do all the, all the job. Gather the, the scripts, uh, do the extracting the preprocessing to um, gather the orbits, and, and, and uh, sorry, the orbits are not needed, gather the gyms, and from the gyms, it can build two kind of, of temporal, of, of VTEC series. Um, for, 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 for using it, uh, I, I wonder how many of you, I'm talking in particular to the students, uh, are, have used Linux in some moment? Very good, very good, okay. So, uh, if not, uh, uh, this here there is a, a, a very fast introduction. Um, uh, just to, to have in your laptop an emulator of X terminal emulator, and uh, I will provide. This is not the, the 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 server that we will use. I will provide you the the is Cabrera is the, a different server. Um, I will provide uh, the the, you, uh, the 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 students in in the in the gym working group. Uh, users, the user ID to access and the port number, and and the idea. Well, these are very simple <laughs> uh, to do echo and to write in one file. Just yes, very in case you don't, in case any of you have not have never worked on Linux, don't 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 worry too much. It's very simple, and also one script will do the 99.9 percent .9 of the work, so it should not be the pro, uh, the Yonsat tool the script. Um, this is no plot, but this in principle is not needed. Are just very simple um, 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 commands to to view plots, to generate plots, and uh, and the, and the, yeah, these are the Yonsat tools. So the the one that we will use is the Gym to Vitek. There are another one which is Gym Renex to Slant TC, which is still not ready for the new Renex version three. So I I am in the way of updating it, but. I have not found time, but we will focus on the gym to be tech. And, uh, and in this script, uh, we will this will allow to extract the VTEC values from the gyms in the time interval that we uh, are is selected. Uh, this, for instance, corresponds to one one uh, project on precise farming. Uh, uh, so, um, and and we applied this. Uh, this this Yonsa tool. So uh, this is a bit maybe uh, too uh, small, but uh, if you call the tool, you enter in with your user ID and your password, I will provide them to you, to the involved people in the working group. So you call the Yonsa tool and you get a help on the screen. And you can see that there are two options, VTEC versus time and VTEC versus latitude. VTEC versus time is very simple, generate a time series from the starting date to the end date from the, from the gym, interpolating at the given time, and interpolating in time and at the, the given location. But also you can generate movies, of VTEC versus latitude, meridional movies. You can define a meridian, the longitude, and you can see how evolves the, the meridian slice or the meridian profile of the VTEC. And this also is interesting to understand some phenomena. Um, yeah, for editing, these are typical who am I, CD, change directory, program working directory. Anyway, I am a person with a certain history, so I still use BI <laughs> as editor, but uh, you can use Xedit, which is more, much more intuitive uh, than BI. Um, and you can, basically, it will be to run a script that they will prepare for from you, especially for, from, for all of you that, that are not, uh, uh, that have, 
have not uh, experience on, on Linux. Uh, this is, for instance, this was one run for three days for, uh, for, uh, for this station. Uh, I guess it's not far from here, but I guess in the Netherlands, right? Both be origin. Okay, and, and uh, this is selected from the, from the Unix directly. For the same day, this is another station in, in, Saudi, in, in Arabian Peninsula, the same scale, sorry, the same scale. And this is Valparaiso because I also, I use these slides in a, in a school in South America. So I, 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 I include the coordinates of Valparaiso. Um, okay, and uh, what we, uh, what the scenarios I'm suggesting, for, uh, suggesting you for this uh, working group. So first, this solar eclipse of 21st August 2017 uh, in North America. Uh, in using the, the another, the other, you have tool with raw data. With raw data, you have much more resolution and sensitivity. So it can be said very clearly uh, the, 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 the diminution, I mean the, the reduction of the VTEC in a stations which are were close to the, to the, to the full, uh, was a full, a complete solar eclipse. So the, the stations closer to the path of the, of the shadow of the moon, so uh, had a very clear uh, signal, shadow uh, re reduction compared with the previous and the next day, but also in Santiago de Cuba as well, because at lower latitude. <laughs> this is with raw data. So I invite the ones that will join the, this working group to see if the gym is able to catch these signals, the gym not the, the raw data with, from the gene directly. So this is the first exercise I have in mind. And the second exercise is to analyze, uh, for me, a very spectacular recent storm in November 5, 2023. And it, it can be interesting to, to see the evolution in different stations. And that's all. This is just the final outline. Uh, yes, the outline that we have used in, Visual introduction to Genesis Sinosphere, how to access to the UPC genes uh, through PTNRF, and there's a couple of new applications that has been, have been summarized, and a very basic introduction of Linux and the intended um, exercises in the GIMP working group. So that's all. More details during this uh, working group. Thanks so much. <laughs>